Hi, we're here at Dimension 3 with Steve Sklar of Reality Digital Studios, the, let's say, the prime mover as far as quality 3D. Yeah, we're, we're a little hung up on quality images. You know? you know, I said this in the speech, you know, it's such a nascent infant business that we just can't afford less than top quality to go out to the public who doesn't even know what 3D is or certainly can't separate 3D now from the 3D they remember from the 50s and the 80s. And maybe years from now we can go abuse an audience, but right now we can't afford to abuse the audiences. We've got to give them good quality images to show them what this new medium can do. I think that that's what Dimension 3 is all about. Thank you very much. Uh, I think that's what Dimension 3 is all about, and you really, really hit the nail on the head with that because I think everybody is missing a lot of points. I think another thing that's important is um, getting this out into the hands of the consumers. And Panasonic, I think, has taken a step in that direction with the, the camera that they showed at NAB. I don't think that was the right avenue to show it in uh, because it was trying to veil it as a professional camera when it's definitely more of a consumer item. Actually, what do you that, think about that? Actually, that wasn't a camera at all. That was just a, a plastic box. model of what a camera might look like someday. Right, so, right. You know, that they were trying an approach that has been tried by another camera company where you just show a model and hopefully people will be interested in it. Um, if there was a camera like that around, I'd buy one. I'd love to go have fun and shoot some simple, just all by myself, put it on my shoulder, sure. 3D content. If we had one like that, you'd be shooting this that way. Quite probably, that's true, because that, that'd be the right kind of application for it. That and birthday parties and softball games and all things like that. But getting back to what you guys are doing, you're taking another step to get, your, to get 3D out into the industry more and get quality stuff out. You're starting to go ahead and sell your own rigs. Yes. Now let's talk about that. I, I know your rigs are state of the art. I mean, you've perfected them quite a bit. You've got a lot of research into them. Talk to me about, uh, you know, why would anyone want your rig, which is going to be undoubtedly more expensive than everybody else's, but why is it so important to have yours? Oh, God, there's a million reasons to buy ours. And, yes, we've spent years perfecting them and millions and millions of dollars in developing these rigs. But, uh, you know, my, my corner of the world is the, the Hollywood side of the world or certainly the high-end production side of the world. And in that world... There's so many things that will work and will not work. And one of the things that won't work is to meet with a producer of a feature and say, yeah, shoot it in 3D and just add, don't worry, just add four weeks to your production schedule because we're going to go out there and realign the cameras between every shot. An extra day of a studio production is millions of dollars. And you, you, can't, shoot, you can't make the business case for a movie work if you're saying it's going to take you extra time. You know, a 60-day shooting schedule, a 40-day shooting schedule has to stay a 60 or a 40-day shooting schedule. So one of the reasons we built the rigs the way they do is because the amount of prep that went into every show, we, should, we used to show up days early and set up the cameras and screw around with the lenses just to get them to kind of match. And that just, that just won't work in this world. So now that everything is matching based on pretty much pushing a button, the cameras will completely align themselves uh, in a split second, and not only will they do that, but they'll keep their eye on alignment all day long because there's image processors behind it that are looking to make sure the images match so that what we shoot on set doesn't need to be fixed in post. It's, it's ready to go into visual effects. It's ready to go on air. And you know, so much of the business is now moving towards live broadcast of this content where we don't even have the luxury of post. It has to be right out of the camera. So we spent a lot of money to perfect the cameras and to that end. You know, for instance, you know, people think we're crazy because the beam splitter mirrors cost us almost $10,000 per mirror. And everybody goes, well, that's what my whole rig costs. And I go, that's great, but can you shoot longer than 80 millimeters and guarantee that the pixels are going to line up? And if they say yes, I say that's not true. That's, yeah. There's yeah. no way. I've looked at glass all over the world. We've tested coatings all over the world. And this is the only path we have found. Now, maybe there's somebody a little cheaper than that, but it takes weeks and weeks and weeks to polish this glass down to the um, flatness level we're looking at, which is pretty flat. When you go out to, a, say, on a sporting event, you're shooting at 180 millimeters, which you kind of need long lenses for. You know, it's only a micron of... of flexibility to be off by a couple of pixels so all you need to do is move the cameras one micron up or down and you're off by pixels so the the mirror actually at that point has a great deal of play in it and the truth is if you're using a ten thousand dollar mirror as opposed to a five thousand dollar mirror 
I've spent more than $5,000 fixing a single shot that was shot on a long lens. So it, it goes with everything else. It saves so much money in post-production.